It says it's starting. Okay, we're live. So, welcome to Susie Shelton's Level 20 Critique. Wow. Yay. Thumbs up. <laughs> Big thumbs up. Yeah. So, let me uh, try to figure out which of my many windows here we have. I guess I first things I know go away. <laughs> me and technology today. Okay. Come on. There we go. Trying to get the white windows sorted here. Okay, so let me share a window. And uh, we'll come to these five images. So I guess we'll just dive right in. Okay. Don't know what else to do. Okay, so let's start with the lighthouse. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's the first and maybe it's the last. I don't remember what the sequence was uh, on your posting, but go ahead and tell us about this image, if you will. Um, well, I was out in Florida uh, about three years ago, and I took this photo, and it's an HDR photo. Um, and I never really liked it in color. It just, I don't know, it, something was off about it. It just didn't appeal to me in color. It was... Uh, it was too much. It was like, you know, so I thought, well, in the level 20, they said you could take an old photo that you have and, and use your new skills and reprocess it. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll try it in black and white. And I liked it better in black and white. I thought it came out pretty good. So. Yeah, I think, I, did. Very, I think it's very nice. You know, I, I like it a lot. I mean, we may get you doing black and white yet. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Think, I don't think I'll so. Ever get me over to the dark side, but you could try. <laughs> no, no, you're doing pretty good on the other side, so I don't know that it would convince you much of, uh, yeah. of the dark side here. Yeah, this one in particular, though, I think um, because of the lighting that day, the greens came out just oversaturated and in, in, in color. So this this helped to really tone it down, and you know, I did some dodging and burning with it. I liked how it eventually turned out. Yeah, I do too. Just uh, some some minor critique is all I offer on this, and that is, to me, it looks like there's just a touch of haloing down here along this edge. Yeah, there is. And I tried okay. to clean it up, and that was about as good as I could get. Oh, yeah, that stuff is... That stuff's it's, hard. Right. it's hard when you have the, the light coming from behind. But if you look up at the tower there's actually a guy standing up there in the tower see him right there oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah no, never know but yeah when i was processing it i went oh there's a dude up there cool i've been doing some uh, some cleaning up of some pictures uh, because i was asked for some images to be published in a in a book and uh, so yeah, I know I was looking at some of them. I thought they were great, you know, and they're great for show and tell when you yeah. post them to Google or something like that. But when you get ready to send them off the publication, you start looking at these things at, at 100 or 200%. You start to say, oh, my goodness, you know, yep. there's this and there's that. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, but this kind so, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it has a lot of halos. It, you know, I tried cleaning it up some, and I, I figured, you know what, it is what it is. And, and I don't know if I – was able to get the raw image anyways. I probably could have done it better. Okay. Probably could have just taken one of the um, the image that was uh, exposed correctly, the zero image, instead mm -hmm. of converting it to a HDR, and that would have eliminated the halos. Maybe, but you know, once you go into HDR, it just jacks everything up. So. Oh yeah, it really. Uh, yeah, you're you're asking for halos when you do HDR. Yeah. But you know, you could go in here or something like this. I mean, this is a nice enough image. It might be worth the the effort to to go back in here. This kind of thing, I'll go in at three or four hundred percent. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll, let me let me. Uh, yeah, I could spend a lot of time cleaning it up. So I'd come. I might come in. You know like this close and uh -huh. then i would you know uh in, in photoshop rather than like yeah, yeah. first i'd come in and i'd get a i'd get a healing brush yeah or, or well no i'd probably use the clone brush here. Um, and yeah. i'd get down in here and I, i'd be working with you know 
two and three pixel wide brushes to just come in here and, and clean the edges up on these things. But that's kind of my process. Yeah. The other thing you know, I well, that's just, what I've done before too. Yeah. It's really drilled in and cleaned it up. But on this one, eh, I just, you know, it was just something I wanted to see how it would look in black and white if I ever wanted to keep this. Um, I don't know if it's good enough quality to for print or anything. So the other thing is, you know, as I as as I look for these things, you know, I do. I would have you need to clean that out of there. Yeah, little hot spots. Little that one especially catches my eye. I didn't have to look yeah. too too hard to find it, and uh, you know there may be some more, but that one's really uh, uh, you know. All right, come on, quick fix. That one bugs you. <laughs> <laughs> there, she's gone. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> well, you know how it is. I always say, you know, that anything that doesn't add to a photo it basically takes away from it. So oh, you've yeah. got to you've got to consider those things. The other thing is there. This this here looks to me like a hot spot. I mean, like a. Let's. Uh, this this looks not these two spots look enough like dust spots that I would clean them out. Uh -huh. I'm not 100 percent convinced that they are, but if I have to ask myself if they are, I usually say, you know, close enough <coughs> to to they are that I'm going to get rid of them. Right. Um, you can check with the spot removal tool in Lightroom. Oh, you good. This, I just was also, this, this image was also taken with my old um, DSLR, so, you know, okay. right. the, I don't remember the pixel size on that camera. I think it was uh, 18 or something. I think um, my new one's like 22, so. That looks like it might be a spot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hard to say. Some of those may or may not be. Uh, that one. Let me, let me tell it's you. very possible they are dust spots. Yeah. See that one right there. I don't know if that. Uh, there we go. Uh, how about that one up there. Sort of could be. But you know the point really is not whether it is not necessarily whether the. Uh, whether it's really a dust spot or not, as much of it as it is uh, perception. Right. Uh, if I perceive that it could be a dust spot, then I have to ask myself, you know, other people looking at it, it's not going to necessarily be clear to them whether you made a conscious decision about it or whether it's a dust spot. Right. And so, you know, when there's any question at all in those kinds of things, uh, when, usually, twice, when in doubt, take it out, right? Exactly, exactly. So, anyway, you know, I uh, just I wanted to see if maybe just a little bit of crop might not. I think the crop helps myself, but uh -huh. know, it brings. It's not. It's not bad the way you have it. It's just. The crop bringing it down to the power lines like this seems to it gives it more strength. Yeah. But you know that's really a, a personal uh, personal choice. And the other thing that was difficult with this one, I had to take it at a pretty high speed because of the wind. So, um, you know, you lose some quality that way too. I think I feel like. Yeah, yeah, you know, because, yeah, you could. So the wind was a hell in there. <laughs> anyway, I'd go ahead. I'd give this, uh, you know, two, two and a half. I mean, because yeah. it does have some, some uh, you know, a few problems. Yeah. There, there are some, you know, this looks like this area wouldn't print very well here because the. No, I don't think this, this image is out, printable, but. in my opinion. I just want to see if I could get it to look better, to, you know. And no, I think you've done a great job of making it look better. I think, you know, considering where you are in your photography, uh, I understand you're thinking that it may not be be printable. For some other people, I think it might be. But, uh, 
Yeah, for me, I, I wouldn't print it. I just wouldn't do it. It's it's good for a you know website, I think. So, Jean Michel, your thoughts? Yeah, I really like the image. I think it's a very good image for trying things, like in post processing. Uh, I agree with you with the halos. You have lots on the on the left side as well. Yeah. On a small. Um, what is it? The plant. <laughs> on the small branches on the left side, you have quite a lot of yellowing as well. Yeah. But, um, what you can try is just play with the light because I see that you painted some light. Yeah, I guess. In the front. Yeah. And probably what you can try is um, try to really be more precise when you paint the light. Uh -huh. and try to take care a little bit more about the background we have, but uh, the light on the background you have. Some rays, where the light is coming. You see that uh, the lighting on the branch, on the, on the grass in the foreground, yeah. does not really fit with the background light. But this is just that. <laughs> Actually, I think it, it does. Just to be I think it does because I the only thing I did with that is I uh, did luminosity. I lightened it using luminosity. So it was yeah. picking up on the light that was already there. I just intensified it. Oh, good. There was a... <laughs> it's just to, to be really picky about something because the image is really good and the, the composition is very nice. And then... That, that, that's the kind of image I like to make. Yeah. <laughs> so I agree with the note Charles gave you. It's a really, really good image. Probably not for printing, but just um, to put on a website or in a gallery. It's very yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. I swear I have the same image. Uh, you do? Yeah, I've taken up near Snoqualmie and we passed just off the interstate. Yeah, this one was uh, Mount Baker Road. Okay. There's a place on the way up to Snoqualmie Pass where uh, uh, there's some hiking trails up there, and you get off and you go off to the one side rather than where the trails are. You go off to the other side, and there's a, a section of road there that looks almost identical to this. I just really liked um, the ice on the highway, and I wanted to capture that white ice there, and I think I did, so... And the trees, they were covered with the ice, so it was pretty cool. It was it was weird because they were hanging down pretty low, and uh, driving through there was scary. <laughs> the, the road was pretty icy, so yeah. I just thought I'd capture how frozen it was. So on this image, I did a lot <laughs> to it. <laughs> I um I use some texture in the back because um I didn't like how it was really white up front. You have this white and black, and then the trees were really green and the sky was really blue. So I took a texture that kind of added like snow and um put it in the background there. That little V back in the back. The other thing I did is I um, did a tweak on the horizontal because it was a crooked. So. Come on. There we go. That's what I'm trying to do. So this one I used the zone system on, and okay. I darkened it up, the the blacks, quite a bit, just because I like the effect. And then I did some light painting and texture effects.
Nice, nice. I used it as well for the second screen on my iPad. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you like my photos. That's awesome. OK, so just a little play. It I was know great that. like that. Now, see, you made it. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. Awesome. Um, you've turned it back into what it was originally, <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Is what I didn't like. Okay. Yeah. I wanted the focus to be more on the road itself and kind of blend in the background a little bit. So that's what I did. Well, see, I was really trying to bring more, uh, you know, get, bring more light here into the road and take it away from the horizon because to me, uh, the. Uh, the V back here, the, this really bright area, draws me completely away from the road, up and out of the image. Okay? If that makes sense. Um, I don't know. For me, it makes the, the road lead you to the V. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because what? That's, that's the opposite. It makes the road go straight into the V, and you see the V after. Yeah, that's what I. That's why I did it that way. Because that for me, my <laughs> eyes went, you know, down the road up to the V. Yeah. Okay. Just the difference in perceptions to me. Yeah. I, I'm drawn the other way. I'm drawn right directly, straight away to the brightest part of the image. But that may be because I haven't had my cataract surgery yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. You guys crack me. So, so uh, you know, I know I did uh, see some other little you know things just a uh, net deck like I like okay. uh, you know some of these little things on the road. Uh, I think you know if you were to look at this in a full size print, I'm not sure that they they really help it. You know, like like this little oh, the ice, black ice blob here. You know, yeah. Uh, let's see, get this way. The black ice blob. Well, that didn't work out very well, but you know. There you go. There we go. And maybe some of these uh, smaller little black blobs. Uh, you know, nothing major, but uh, usually I'm picking on the white blobs. Right here, I'm going to pick on the black blobs. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, you know. I'm not as uh, I, I'm not as fond of this image as I am of the uh, the black and white. Oh, surprise! Uh, but uh, it's a nice image, so I think I'd give this one probably give this uh, about a two as well. I'm sure, Michelle. Uh, I would go for a two point five. Okay. Because I th I think the color really works for me. I tried to make it in black and white, and uh, I couldn't get something very very more interested than, yeah. than that in black and white doesn't really work in black and white but in color it's really really nice that no, all kind of just, just blends together in black and white doesn't yep. it yeah it doesn't have the same effect of light so in black and white hmm. No, it's not much to say about this. It's just, uh, no, it's a really good image. Probably just uh, the alignment of the road, but uh, that it wouldn't make the image not as, uh, not as good as that one. It's nice to have something that is not perfect in it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the leading line. So, no, it's, it's a really nice image. Thanks. So it reminds me of something that uh, that uh, Duncan said in one of his uh, one of his critiques, and that was that uh, he had to leave something for us to find. Otherwise, what would we have to talk about? <laughs> That's actually not too bad. Who did that, uh, Charles? Yeah, just a bleach bypass. Kind of gives it a very graphic feel, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That's not too bad in black and white. I'm just uh, it's just one of the uh, the uh, standard uh, Lightroom presets. Yeah. And so 
is the uh, bleach bypass. I, what I was thinking is, you know, it's not really easy uh, to do in Lightroom, easy to do in uh, Photoshop, not as easy to do in, in Lightroom. And I was just thinking, you know, what would this look like uh, a bit desaturated uh, rather than change to black and white, uh, you know, with some desaturation, but I'm not sure that it makes any, that really... Uh, it's very graphic with the bleach bypass, but it's kind of cool. So let me see. I don't know how to desaturate them all at once. I don't know if they're... Show me, show us there a way to desaturate them all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> what? Whatever. <laughs> uh, let's come back to. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll move on. <laughs> but it's always the the case when you have some very good images like this one. You can try a hundred things, and every time you try something, you see a different image. And uh, yeah. But then you always go back to the original image and go, I like that the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's nice to experiment. Yeah. Okay, on this image, um, you, can, you know, I was playing with my, um, when I went up camping I uh, in December, it's really cold, but I got a lot of good eagle shots. And this one I was able to get fairly close, and with my 600 millimeter, I could zoom right in on this bird there there was no cropping done on this image at all wow and uh and so i decided you know what i i'm gonna play with this and i i uh i used um topaz products to um well all of it all of it is done through topaz so i use glow i used impressions i used um What's the other one? Can't think of it now. Uh, texture. Um, the background is strictly just a texture back there. And then I um, I got rid of all the detail of the texture and added a to the color because I really like the contrast. But I added some color as well into the bird itself. So I thought it made its feathers and stuff come out really uniquely. Because if you notice, there's like orange and greens and blues in his feathers now and reds. <laughs> that fun playing with that one. That was fun. <laughs> That's I, a just went, I just went, I'm going to go crazy on this photo. Why not? You know? Yeah. And I did. It looks like it paid off. It looks pretty nice. I like it. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not something that I would ever arrive at, but uh, that doesn't make it wrong that maybe actually is a plus <laughs> <laughs> well i just wanted to show a lot of color so i thought why not just go overboard on the color and and i i think it worked for this bird because he i mean he's really got an attitude he's looking at me like why are you taking my picture <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know i uh, over here uh, you can see a uh, kind of a linear thing. I know it's probably just uh, what's been done with, uh, you know, impression and the other uh, Topaz tools. But you might try to use a smudge finger in here to to get that so it's not quite such a prominent edge down across there. Okay. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. Uh -huh. Yeah, it looks like it's on that one side, huh? I mean, there's some other places in here where it does that, but this is really the... The, uh, the 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 one that catches the eye the most, you know. It, it, uh, yeah, that's it, right. It pulls. Uh, I mean, you know, most people aren't. I mean, you know how it is. We're looking at these with a very critical eye. Most people are never going to notice this little uh, linearity over here. It's not. It's not an error in any way. It's just, you know, is it? Is it? Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. 
it could stay in the way it is, but it might be better if it wasn't there. Even, even just, you know, like the healing brush along that edge might make a difference as well. Like, yeah. You know, sometimes these things, when you get this much color and this much variation, variation from pixel to pixel, it's it really hard to do much of anything with them in Photoshop. But, uh -huh. You know, it gets to the point where it's, you know, starting to get beyond me to be able to correct those kinds of things because they're, they're really tough. But I'm sure there's people that do it in a in a heartbeat. But I'm I'm not quite that uh, adept. But uh, no, very striking. Very you know such an excellent catch. You know to get there and have this bird look right at you. And it's you know it's in wonderful focus. I was uh, lamenting again the other day, and probably uh, shouldn't say this, but you were well advised to not buy the Sigma 5500 that I had in the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I mean, somehow you seem to get sharp pictures out of that thing, but I, I don't, I was out last week uh, shooting yeah. uh, the desert sheep in Zion, and most of the pictures are pretty soft, and it was like really nice pictures, but softer than I, I am really, I'm like. impressed with this 600, I'm telling you, I, I just like, I'm blown away by it, I've gotten some really good stuff with it so far, so. Well, you know, in a 600 is, you know, the, the, the 50, 500 like that, I'm not sure that even that's long enough. You know, 600 is cool. I'd love yeah. to have a 600. Because that's what you need if you're going to do wildlife. You know, yeah. the longer, you got to have at least that. Go, yeah. I'd love to have an 800, but then uh, I think my husband would kill me. You'd have to sell the house to buy one of yeah, those. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? $13,000? Are you crazy? No. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's about five hundred dollars a day just to rent that thing. I know, I know. <laughs> it's like buying a car, a used car. Oh. Okay, Jean Michel, your thoughts? Uh, when when I first saw the image and um, on the album you you posted, I was uh, I thought it was the best image of the set. I really like it because I like the the, the capture you got. Uh -huh. like the instant and the look of the eagle and just you can probably consider that it's it's just a very tiny bit of a process that's all yeah all that was done but it's, just, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fantastic image yeah it was totally i i wanted to make it extreme so i thought why not you know and then uh <laughs> Because I was playing around with it um, as more of a serious type photo, and it just, it was good, but it didn't, like, knock my socks off. And then I, I started doing this, and I went, wow, I really like that. That's cool, you know. Even black and white is cool, too. So. Yeah, I, I well, watched it in black and white in my room, it's, uh... It's a fantastic image, so it, it does work yeah. in black and white as well as in the yeah. you know the color that you've done. But it's just a such a you know you're so engaged with the bird. It's a, it's a very compelling image. Yeah, he's he's really yeah. It was cool. I I had so much fun photographing these eagles. You got it's just crazy because they have a limit where you can when you're out there right. And if you get within, I'm going to say, 100 feet of them, that, that's like their limit. So if you step over that limit, they fly away. So it's really difficult to get, like, this close to him. And, and he let me. So, But you can see he's looking at me like, I'm getting ready to fly off now. <laughs> <laughs> Take your best shot. You better be Close. quick. Yeah. <laughs> You know, take take the shot. Don't be thinking about it now. <laughs> yeah, but I had so much fun. I was just, it was great. Even though it was so freaking cold. It was in the teens. Mm. And I was out there. I had my thermal underwear on and everything. And then, you know, of course, what I was doing is I have these thinner gloves I put up uh, under my thicker gloves so I can at least remove the top glove and get, you know, work my right. camera. But, man, I, I it was cold. That was a great trip. In, the, in France, in the in the south, we have um, a bird show. Uh huh. And they have 
eagles like that. And during the show, they come, they fly over you, but probably they come one meter from you. Uh huh. They just fly over your head. Yeah. And you can you can't even touch her like that. Wow. I don't know. But there's there's something trained. about um in in the wild getting animals in the wild that's really appealing to me. It's, oh, yeah. it's hard to do. So. Yeah. Well, if I if I remember right, there's a, there's some places like uh, down in the Tarn Valley, in in central France, there where there's a where a lot of the eagles nest. Do you, do you remember that, Sean? Mm -hmm. Been down there, seen the eagles. No, I never been there. This mm -hmm. where the show is called Le Puy du Fou. It's uh, near Bordeaux. Oh, okay. So yeah, if you don't like the color on this, you can always turn it in black and white. It looks good in both, I think. <laughs> no, no, you know, I like I love the colors. It, it, it works, you know. It works in color for even for us black and white guys. <laughs> because the image itself is so compelling. But Yeah. You know, I mean, it's one of those things. It, quite often, you know, color images don't, I mean, they're not interchangeable. An image doesn't look good in both black and white and color. Right. And so, so it's a especially uh, it's a special image that really works in both. Because you know, they're kind of what makes a black and white image is a little bit different than what makes the color right. image. Right. And so, when it works both, uh, you have to know that you know the image itself is compelling as this. You know the bird looking right at you like this. I mean, this is a this is a fantastic image. There's no way it doesn't matter what you know. Turn it purple, it would still be a, a fantastic <laughs> image. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. uh, no way to do weird things like split toning. See, even split toning doesn't look too bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see what else can we do here. I'm not sure about that one, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure about that either. Let's see, cross process. Mm. That's kind of cool. Hmm. I like that one. I like color though, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, I don't know that adding heavy grain to it is just not gonna make it, but there's not much you can do to this that, you know, it works just about no matter what you do, so. Anyway. I, you know, we'll give this a a, a light uh, a light three because it's got so much color. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> that is not fair. Just teasing, just teasing. So uh, no, it deserves a five. <laughs> <laughs> so. so yeah, we'll give it a three for sure. Uh, okay, next image. So this was taken at um, these units that are out here. They're wildlife units. They're like reserves for the birds that went over here in Washington State. So this one was taken at the League Island unit in um, Conway. No, this was in Stan Stanwood. And so... I belong to this um, Facebook blog of wildlife out here, and um, people were getting these cool pictures of owls, and I went, shit, where is this? So they, the only thing I knew is it was off Eddie Road, and I'm like, where the hell is Eddie Road, and what is this place? So I did a Google search, and sure enough, I came up with this. It's this really obscure little place. You'd never know it was there. You drive way back in there and, and park, and there's these owls. You have to tromp across uh, when I went out there was this was taken it was really cold and um, the it's like a marshland really but it was all frozen so you could go out in the fields and so I just went exploring and and uh, it was early in the morning um, this one was taken when I first um, got there and um, the lighting was uh, Pretty cool. I mean, I, I really like the color, um, of the first light, you know, and and I saw this owl sitting over there, 
and he was half his half of his face was in the shadows like that. How cool is that, you know? And I uh, got the shot. And he, he, you know, he wasn't looking directly at me. He was kind of looking off. Um, but I still really liked it. You know, I thought it was pretty cool. Just playing. You know, I'm not sure. It's a wonderful image. I'm not. I'm not sure about these background weeds. They 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 seem a little distractive, but removing them seems to make the image less dynamic. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's some. Actually, it's not. They're not weeds. It was trees back there. So. Right. There's just something about the you know the lines the lines of the trees. They're sort of I don't know help provide some natural framing to the owl where taking them out of there uh, seems to make it, it, it the image seems flatter I don't know but you know it's one of those artistic decisions there's neither the one is right or wrong it's just a, a different way to go with it but I think it probably works okay like that uh, yeah but you know when you remove it it just removes the dimension. Yeah. yeah, it sort of makes it, uh, it makes it feel a bit flatter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, let's go on this one. Hmm. Again, you know, taking that that flare out of there may or may not help. I think I think I think taking the flare out is a is a small improvement, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't put money on it. <laughs> the other thing, I, you know, I thought about with this image is uh, I feel that there's too much space in the image, but it certainly works the way it is. So I was thinking, you know, like a a four three crop or something on this you know just uh no that wasn't quite the way i wanted it but let me back that up get it right yet. Something like that, perhaps. The full image and then uh, with the crop. I think the, the crop helps. To me, that crop helps make the bird stand out even more. It makes it a little stronger, but uh, uh, it's it's one of those things that's uh, arguable. Am I being uh, am I doing a lot of equivocating this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, excellent image. I'd say we you know we probably have to give this a three as well. You know, it's just a beautiful image, beautiful capture. You know, you you really uh, I don't know you you know your photography has really uh, come a long way. I don't. Uh, just a just a beautiful image. Thank you. Well, you know, for me, if you want to crop it, you have to crop it exactly like in the iPhone. Yeah. That's a crop that works well. Yeah. But um, 
I wouldn't change the image. Yeah, I really like it. I was thinking of um, yeah. uh, entering it into the Audubon contest for 2017. Um, there's a cash prize too if you win, but I don't know yet if I'm going to do it or not. Well, you can win something with an image like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good, pretty good image. I was happy with it. I was like, wow, that came out good. That's that lens, I'm telling you, I love that lens. It's like cool. I get stuff now that I've never gotten before with that lens. But I also, one of my tricks is I've learned is for doing uh, wildlife is do back, bu back button focusing because I can keep the focus and let the camera worry about all the other stuff, you know, the shutter. And so it keeps focus for me, especially if I do AI servo <clears throat> with a continuous focus, and then I have it set to high speed um, shutter. And so this one, I think, though, I uh, took down the shutter speed because he was just sitting there quite a bit. I think he, I shot him at 640 um, of a second. But usually when I'm out shooting birds, I have it up to 1,600. It says 2,000. How, what? It says 2,000 of a second. Oh, it does? Okay. Uh, six, four, six, three. Then maybe I didn't. Well, I it turned out really good. So, turned out uh, I was trying all sorts of things, though. So. I would, I would uh, see about doing a clone or uh, cleaning out that. That little, whoops, that certainly didn't work. <laughs> okay, let me get a smaller brush here. Oh, that didn't work too well either. Let me try a different. So with the Autobahn contest, you cannot um, manipulate the image at all, except for exposure, color correction, and you can do a little bit of dodging and burning. So that's why I thought I would enter this one, because basically I didn't have to do a whole lot to it. Well, I don't know. To me, see, this background looks like it's been heavily processed. Because I wouldn't expect to uh, let me get this in 100%. And you can see, you know. Well, uh, I did use... Um, on the background, no, but on the bird, yeah, the background has some processing to it, doesn't it? Yeah, so I, might have put a I might have put a texture layer on there to bring out the color more. Yeah, you, you've done something there, and I, I don't think that, you know, as such, you probably you probably have to go back and redo it to enter it to the Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to have to. <coughs> I will make sure it. have to redo it. They're going to they're gonna look at this and say that it's – because – this, yeah. is, this is at 100%, which means if you were to print this image, all of this texture is going to come out in the print. You're going to see the texture in this. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, a, as for printing for your own, for, for you know, galleries and other things, your, for your own wall, that sort of thing, it, it works great for, yeah, I, for I something that requires minimal processing. It's not going to work. Yeah, I printed it out and... Uh, it came out great as print, so. Cool. Okay, so, well, you know, it's another home run here. <laughs> Let's uh, bump this down. Uh, any any further thoughts about this, Jean-Michel? No, it's, it's a really not a fantastic image. Thank you. Okay, let's see. I think this is the last image, isn't it? Yeah. I think I'd probably crop this one too. Okay. Right. So another great image, you know, hard, hard to, you know, hard to find anything wrong with it. <laughs> I just really like that he was, uh, he, he, he flew onto this post and I went, oh my gosh, pose. Now look at me. So this owl was looking all over the place, right? And I just happened to be able to capture him looking directly at my camera and then took his picture. I thought, how cool is that? 
yeah, just uh, beautifully done. A beautiful capture. You know, you seem to be uh, understanding where to where to be, where to go, and where to be to get the these fantastic shots. I know it's not easy. You know, I've gone out a couple of times to do stuff like this and come home without any pictures. And uh, it's yeah. hard. I probably I took um, I well each time I've gone out uh, I've also captured some trumpeter swans that came out pretty good, although not as sharp because they were flying. But it's still a, a I think a pretty good image, solid image. But um, yeah, you, you know it's it's like uh, several hundred pictures each time I go out or more, and then it's just weeding through. <laughs> Because you have to understand, I'm shooting at a really high rate. My camera, the 70D, does, uh, I forget how many it does a second. I think it is seven or nine frames a second, something like crazy. And so I can shoot a lot. And I think that's what helps me is I'm just shooting, you know, continuously. And then I just go through each frame, and when I get the right one where he's looking right at me, that and, and using back button focus really helps me stay uh, a sharp on tap. So I'm learning these things, and I still suck at Biff, but I'm getting better. <laughs> That's the, that is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do is uh, birds in flight. It's very difficult. And so I've been training, I've been learning. I've gone out twice now to this um, other area um, called Fur Island, uh, where the trumpeter swans have been, uh, went, you know, uh, stopped on their migration process and uh, practicing Biff there. Just, you know, keep taking pictures, keep practicing. You know, you, you kind of, I finally figured out you got to set up your shot, wait for them to get close enough. Make sure you're focused. They're still flying in the air towards you, you know, and then take the shot, right? So it's like this whole process you have to learn, and it's intense. Jasper, you you can try something. Sure. Just go to the, the A's and add something like plus 10. So that's uh, with some dehaze. What else did you want me to do? No, that's the only thing. Just, the just a very, very little bit of dehaze. A little bit of dehaze. That's... So that's 17. Yeah, 17 is good. Yeah, it, it, it's it, good add, it adds a little more. It's, it seems to add a little bit of pop to it. Yeah. So what was that? Dehaze it? Dehaze. In Lightroom, you in go Lightroom. to the effects panel, and you have a small slider called DAs. Yeah, would you do 17 minus 17? Or plus, uh, yeah, you can try plus. Three, no, plus. plus. You can try. If you go minus, it will add A's. Add, OK. If you go plus, it will remove it. So and it's add nice when you want to boost contrast or. OK. But just not add too, don't, don't add too much, because it adds a lot of darks. Yeah. But just something like something between plus ten or plus fifteen, seventeen would is perfect for that. Okay. Cool. So there's ten. Yeah, it looks uh, great. And there's uh, seventeen. So yeah, somewhere in there, probably it adds a little. It adds some pop to it, some depth to it. Uh huh. But, you know, ultimately another excellent image. Uh, again, you know, I don't know. I think the 4 3 works, but so does the uh, original crop. So uh, I kind of, you know, uh, I got to liking the 4 3 a little bit when I was uh, submitting a lot of stock photography. And part of the reason, it's kind of a backward reason for doing it. Uh -huh. But when you do stock photography, and this is true uh, even on Google Plus, or it used to be, that a 4.3 crop shows a bigger thumbnail than a standard aspect ratio. 
Right. So that if you're submitting to a stock library where a whole page of thumbnails comes up, your four three thumbnails are bigger than everybody else's. Oh and, yeah. Uh, Is that why you did it? It's part of the reason. So sometimes I'll look and see if a four three works because it draws more attention to itself. Uh, and it's true in Google Plus. It's generally truer. Like I said, it it looks larger when you do a four three crop than when you do a uh, standard aspect ratio. And so, uh, you know, and there's enough people doing micro four thirds that the, the four three crop is is uh, becoming, you know, more or less uh, one of the common formats. Yeah, so on this image, I brought this into Topaz as well, textures, and I did their light leak. So this whole sun area is from the texture effect. Oh, cool. You know, I, I bought the uh, I bought the entire uh, Topaz suite back in uh, Black Friday, and you know, I, I don't think that I've loaded up most of it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I've been oh. having. I I think it works great for wildlife, so I've been having a blast mm -hmm. using it for wildlife. Well, you know, it's a much bigger learning curve than just uh, opening up the Nick tools and sliding sliders. And no, so. this yeah, this one is more artistic, so you got to get in there and play around with it. I watched a bunch of videos of other artists doing their thing, and I thought, okay, I like this, this, and this. Let me try it myself and play around, and that's kind of how these images evolve. Just playing around. You know, I think, I, you know, like like usual, I think I do some Border Patrol, you know, these little uh, things that are, you know, out here by themselves. There's only a couple of them. I think I'd uh, go ahead and, you know, they're not really significant, but why not, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's one here, and there was another one over here, little tips of these weeds that stand out. And, and I thought, oh, well, you know, it doesn't make a lot of difference, but it, a little bit, so okay so yeah just a, uh, another excellent image uh, just a fantastic set of images uh, you know something certainly the whole set's uh, something to be happy happy with yeah so i don't think there's much question about whether uh, we pass you on to uh, uh you know at beyond level 20 because we've already done it before we had the hangout <laughs> yeah I, I didn't think there was much doubt, you know, looking at the, the five images you, you posted, uh, you know, you'd, you'd had to have been trying to, to, to see what we would do. <laughs> you'd have had to have been trying to fail to fail, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, you, I, I don't know if what you guys think, but the, I haven't even like uh, signed up for this other focus thing, that focus uh, hangout thing or whatever community. The well, let, let's let's tie up the the hangout recording part and then we'll talk. Okay. All right. So anyway, great uh, great set of images. It's been great to have you in our cohort for these past many months, and we really enjoyed seeing uh, your photography and your post-processing skills evolve. I have to thank you guys for pushing me into Photoshop or I would have never gotten this far. I mean, it was, it was hard for me. And as I told you before, Charles, it took me a long time before I finally got it. <laughs> it's all <laughs> about the processing. And it just, it, you have to beat me with a hammer sometimes. I was just like, no, no, it has to be about the image. It has to be about both, but in order for it to get to the next level, it has to be about the processing. So, yeah, you know, if you I look mean, at the first five images you, you posted in the community, yeah, and you look at this one, the difference is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big difference. Big difference. I've grown. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was like pulling teeth. It was just like. No, I don't want to learn this. No. Yeah, but you you've stuck with it, which is uh, yeah. You know, I mean, you've been here long enough to know that that uh, even people that are making good progress don't necessarily stick with it through to the to the end of the process. I mean, they may continue to, on their own journey, but so many people come in and they they 
they start out and they do really well for a while and then they kind of just it's hard man it, it was hard for the, it took me a whole year to get through this process so but that yeah. included a lot of times of travel and taking photos and learning the software i mean that alone took me probably i don't know a couple of months just to learn most of the basic stuff in photoshop right, right. So, but once i started getting the plugins down and the masking and being able to manipulate the photos the way i wanted to then it kind of all just fell into place and i was like oh yeah well, you know, with my own journey in Photoshop, it had to be, I had to force myself up to a point where I started to get what I actually wanted to get rather than just struggling with Photoshop. And once you, if you can stick with it that long, when you get to the point where you start to feel like you're creating art, yeah, that, then it starts to click. And then the time you spent in, in Photoshop and these other tools, it starts to become worth worth the pain. Yep, yep. It's but, so but now it's you can see this last set of images is like oh it clicked oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know it's really it's kind of funny you should say that because I think that Richard Adams was pretty close to level twenty before it all clicked for him and he just uh, you know made this uh, light year jump uh, between fifteen and twenty. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay, I'm going to stop it and uh, then we okay. can go and chat uh, some more.